Hello everybody. Okay, today I am going to do a new craft and I got this idea from YouTube and what I want to do is make some blinged out bottles for my photography studio and I want to go ahead and start this craft off real simple. My husband drank a beer yesterday and this small little bottle is what I'm going to try to make my first attempt at blinging out a bottle and so one of the products that I need in order to do so is some Mod Podge. Mod Podge. I always say it incorrectly first and then I correct myself. Mod Podge. And this is the glossy luster that's going to adhere glitter the bling to the bottle. In order to adhere the Mod Podge to the bottle, I am going to need a foam brush. So I have a foam sponge brush, whatever you want to call it. And I have all different color glitters that I was able to pick up. Now what I like to start off with when I start my crafts is explaining the cost of these things. Now, of course, you know, your beer. I have wine bottles too old, very old wine bottles <laughs> that I, I, I haven't drank since my son is 22, since he was 18. So that's four years. So I don't know what any of this stuff tastes like. This, I remember, this very pretty bottle, Allegro Moscato. Oh, it's Moscato. People talk about that all the time. Moscato Allegro. Someone gave us... Um, when we lived at our old house, um, that's about 16 years ago. It was a gift from a neighbor. And this um, sticker, price sticker is coming off because I just washed off the bottle. For some reason, I said, I'm going to keep these pretty bottles. And now I know why. I needed it for a craft for my future photography studio. I always believe that God gives me purpose for all the little collections that I have. So these little bottles are old bottles that are kind of cute um, in the way that they're shaped. I kept them all these years, not knowing why, but now I have a purpose. Allegro Moscato by Martin Weyrich. I remember it was sweet. Um, and I think it was it was quite tasty. My husband and I liked it, so we bought a second bottle on our own. So I have these pretty bottles. I know for, for sure one of these bottles is going to be gold and the other bottle is going to be silver. Um, but again, like I stated, I'm going to start with this beer bottle because I want to see how quick and easy this particular project can be. And... Um, it should be easy, it should be quick, and it shouldn't be very messy. So, I have one paper plate. Of course, you know, a pack of 50 may cost you about 30, excuse me, $3 and some change. The Mod Podge, um, I did a price check on that. I started out at Michael's, and Michael's, this 16 ounce jar of Mod Podge was $11. And while I was standing at Michael's, I decided to go online and see how much it cost at Walmart. And at Walmart, it was $6 and some change. So, of course, I went to Walmart. Now, the glitter for this 16-ounce jar of glitter, um, I was able to find, because they're with crafting going on and it being the holidays, um, you have to find what you can find, find what you can get your hands on. So all I found were these two colors in this size at Walmart, and they were $7 and some change each. Now, where I felt the ripoff came from was these little jars of glitter. And I got these from Walmart. And they were $2.50 a piece. Now I thought to myself, that's a good price until I realized that the whole bottom of it is in what do you call I don't want to say caved in, but the 
is missing half the, the, the glitter because of the cuteness of stacking them on top of each other. So I think that's a ripoff. But for two fifty, I mean, you get what you get. I at least expected it to be level off the bottom. And then, you know, I don't care about stacking them on top of each other. So they stole this much out. <laughs> but easy storage, I guess. Easy storage. Rip off. Whatever you want to call it. But they are pretty colors. And I got these for two fifty each at Walmart. Um this color, and it's not giving me an exact name, but it seems to be a whole bunch of different colors in one. Um, it's giving me a Christmas vibe, but it's also giving me a silver vibe. Um, I didn't, I did see a plain silver, but this one stuck out more for me, so I decided to get this one. This one was about $5.99 at Michael's and um, the silver that they had was maybe, this is eight ounces, the silver was probably two ounces and it was $2.99, maybe $3.99, I'm not certain. So I got this one and again, it gave me a better vibe than the, just the bright silver. So these are the colors that I have. Um, so basically that's all you need to start out with. Um, I'm going to take the bottle. I washed the bottle off and I washed the inside of this particular bottle off um, and the inside earlier today. So it should be dry. Um, if it's not, I'm only painting the outside of it with my my Podge. And so that's all I'm going to worry about. I'll go ahead and open the my Podge. And I'm going to have to... Ugh, all right. Hmm, I got just a little bit of it on my hand, but that's okay. Break the seal. I don't want to make a mess. So, it's going to dry quickly from what I understand. But I'm going to paint this Mod Podge all over my beer bottle. Okay? So, I'll just go ahead and start here. I'll save the paper plate for, for the glitter. I'll go ahead and start here. And let's see. I'll pour a little bit of the Mod Podge. Podge. I'm going to have to Google what Podge stands for. What it means. Pour a little bit of it. And it's a thick substance. I'm not sure if you can see. A thick substance. So the way I envision a little goes a long way. I'll start here, take my sponge, paint sponge, and I am going to adhere this Mod Podge solution all over the bottle. Just cover it, cover it, cover it, cover it. I may take the top off, and it doesn't matter with the label because I expect to cover this entire bottle with glitter. And the label should be completely covered in glitter, so you shouldn't be able to see it at all. I want a nice layer, a smooth layer of my Podge all over my bottle, front and back, side to side. And... I think I want it on the top. I don't know. I might not need it on the top because I want to kind of use my finger to hold the bottle as I'm spreading the Mod Podge on. Now, I'm not a left-handed person, so let's see what I can do with some Mod Podge <laughs> and the brush in my left hand. As long as I can go straight up and down, I probably shouldn't have a problem. Okay. So try and cover the entire bottle and more my Podge. Cover, cover, cover. Try not to leave any open spots. And if I do, 
I'm going to do another layer anyway, so it shouldn't matter. Now, this is my first time doing Mod Podge for any craft. And, yeah, I'm going to say, honestly, these are my first crafts, period. So, I'm a little excited about it. I think to make this beer bottle look innocent, because I'm using it for a prop, I am going to use this iridescent color. Use this iridescent color. So I'm going to take what, you know, beer. Beer is not that, let's say, um, it's not that hardcore, I wouldn't say. I'm going to need something to open this. I could probably use this beer bottle cap. Pop it open. Use a little elbow grease. Mm. Not that my daughter used to say, you have the weakest arms in the world. I'll get a knife. Excuse me one second. What better knife she'll do? I don't want my Mod Podge to dry up, so I'm just going to go ahead and Poke that through, and I'll go back to my paper plate, put my beer bottle on top, and while I'm holding the bottle, I am going to sprinkle it with these iridescent, I'm going to have to use the side that pours. So let's see. And it shouldn't matter because I'm trying to collect all of the excess glue onto the paper plate. So as long as it lands on the paper plate, And my bottle doesn't dry, my Mod Pod doesn't dry, I'm not wasting anything. So, I'll take that paper plate that's full of Mod Pod, excuse me, full of glitter, put it over to the side, bring my empty paper plate, and I'm already changing the tutorial that I saw. I'm going to take the excess glitter from the first paper plate and pour it on to the second paper plate. I'm not wasting too much. It's landing back on the on the first paper on the first paper plate on the second paper plate rather. And all I got to do is just keep going back and forth with the plates. Now, notice I did not close it so I don't waste it. I did not completely cover the bottle. You can still tell that it's brown on the other side. And that's fine. What I'm going to do is pack it in just a little bit. I'm going to get more of my podge. I want to make sure that my sponge is pretty much soaked in it. And whatever I don't use from the cup, I'll pour right back into the bottle. And I'm trying to remember. Let's see. If I do this, I don't want it to come off. It's not coming off because it's stuck on there.
This might be, it might not be a bad idea. I'll go ahead and move the plate that has the thick amount of my podge on it, or thick amount of glitter on it. And I'll just go ahead and slather on some more Mod Podge. It's not removing the thick layer of glitter that was already on there. It's not doing that. It's just kind of sealing it in. It might appear that it's removing, but it's not. It's sealing it in. And once I get a good layer on there again, I will add more glitter again. So this again is my first attempt at my Podge making a glitter bottle or a, what do you call a bedazzled bottle, a bling bottle for a photo prop. Now, I'm going to take the plate that's full of my podge, excuse me, full of glitter. Let me see, I do have a big clump of my podge right here. I want to kind of smooth that out. And I can see that it is blinging out. It is blinging out. So I'm not worried. I'm excited. Take this glitter, this thick amount of glitter on this plate, and just pour it on. And whatever is loose should land on the plate below. And just keep rotating the plates. Uh-oh. Got a little heavy-handed. Put a big a dip right there. And then I should let it dry just a little. But I want to make sure that this neck part has enough my patch but then doesn't have big clumps of my patch so I'll scrape a little excess off my sponge I don't know if you can see me scrape a little excess off and just kind of try and smooth this neck area or the shoulders area because the neck is up a little closer to the top. Okay. And I will rotate my plate again. Bring in the empty plate. And go ahead with my Spread. Closer to the middle of the table so I don't lose too much. And what I can do. is I can kind of shape it with my hands because at the end of the day I want a blinged out bottle so it doesn't matter what was underneath just 
just as long as the glitter is nice and flat on the surface and I will seal it with my Podge at the end so just shaping it a little and I'll let it dry whatever falls off lands on the plate I got a little bit of glitter here on my paper surface that I'm using to protect my table and I can brush some of that off onto the paper plate in a little bit and I'm going to let this dry it shouldn't be too long but in the meantime you know the label of the beer bottle is fading away so i think i'm coming together i think it's coming together it's not too bad and at the end of the day it should all be snowy white so i'm gonna let it dry and i'm i'll get back to you in just a few minutes Okay, so the bottle has dried a little bit, as you can tell. Some of the Mod Podge has solidified and the glitter is still adhering to the bottle. I'm going to shake off what's here and move over to the empty plate again. So, switching plates. My Mod Podge has set just for a few minutes it shouldn't be too dry or anything i i'm just going to stir it up a little bit and put on a nice helping of my podge onto the bottle again don't know can you see just trying to get a nice helping of my Podge onto the bottle as smooth as I can. You know, not trying to leave any streaks. Now, the glue or the my Podge has glitter in it as well. So it is leaving a nice, pick up some of the excess, a nice coating of my podge with glitter mixed in so just going to try and get it all over the bottle no bare spots go around in the circle just turning the bottle as i go and let me go ahead and just twist 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 and turn no big glops, no streaks. Whatever I see excess, I'll just smooth it over. And pretty much, just looking at it, you know, the whole thing might be considered completely covered. I want to make sure, though, of course, so I am going to put another helping of glitter on there. Now, so with that being said, I have my glitter on my plate, my transfer plate, that's a good name for it. And as I just sprinkle down, And it's landing on the Mod Podge. Some people might actually call it Mod Podge. That's on them. I've always tried my best to use proper grammar and um, say things as they're spelled. There's a word for that, but I'm not perfect. I'm just a person who likes to say the, way, the words as they are spelled. So... I'll Google 
that later also. <laughs> what is the word for saying a word as it's spelled? Enunciate? Ah, I might have it. Pronunciate? Oh, that might be it too. I like it. I like it. So, again, transfer, slide over, my podge, another layer, trying to get the glue onto the spare spot. I don't think anything is ever going to be perfect, but I'm not trying to sell this to anybody, but I do want it to appear on the picture as nice as it can possibly be. So I'll do this side of the top. Transfer. Move my plate. Ooh. Okay, that was a smooth transition. And glitter. I hope I'm not going in the bottom. I might be. I have to check. Hopefully, the layer that I'm thinking I touched would have already been dry. So, put some glue on here. Can you see? Glue my podge. And I'm thinking that my podge is just another word for glue. That's what I'm thinking. And my hand is loosening up a little so I don't want to miss any. And whatever lands on the paper, that's fine because, again, the paper is just another catch all for the excess glitter. Transfer. Finger. Get my finger in there as deeply as I can. I'll let this dry a little more. And I'll come back to it. And after it dries completely, I am going to put a clear layer of Mod Podge on the very top layer. Um, because I want it to be completely smooth. I don't want um, for it to be lumpy. I want for it to be a nice smooth bottle and I want it to be completely white with the glitter so when I take my picture and it flashes you'll see the sparkles from the iridescent white so I'm going to give it another few minutes to dry and I'll come back okay so I have allowed the bottle with the Mod Podge and the glitter on it to dry a little bit more so it's hardening just a little bit more than what it was and while I was taking that little break I decided to do exactly what I said before Google what Mod Podge is made of and guess what the answer was Mod Podge is made of Elmer's glue <laughs> with a little water in it. So, therefore, now you do get 16 ounces of it, of course. But what they've done was they rebranded Elmer's glue or PVA glue, as they called it, and it's got some water in it. It is a little thicker, so it might have a thickening agent in it. And they put another name on it, and oh, you get this 16 full ounces at Michael's, a brand branded store for 11 and some change. But you get this 16 ounce 
at Walmart for six dollars and some change. Now you can go to the dollar store and get a couple of bottles and spend maybe two or three dollars and end up with this amount. But basically, I'm slathering glue in this case mixed with some sprinkles or glitter <laughs> all over this bottle glue now and once it dries and dries smooth then I will have a glittered bottle now I'm not trying to take off any of the glitter I'm trying to add glitter to it so let me still be careful while I'm adding the glitter now my final coat of my podge will seal all of the glitter in all of the glitter so I am going to use a clean cup a clean paint sponge and my bottle will just have my podge adhered to it versus my podge and glitter adhered to it so I'm just trying to make it thick enough now so that you can't see through and if I have to go over it a few times to make it thicker, or I don't know, can you see? I want to make sure you can see me and not just an empty plate. See me slathering on this glue, <laughs> glitter glue. Now, my invention would be. T.S. Ditto Glitter Glue. <laughs> and I'll just put all the one color glitter inside a bottle of glue and call it T.S. Ditto Glitter Glue. That's what I would do. And we wouldn't have to have all these different bottles laying around, all these different bottles of, of applicant. Um, of glitter and glue to apply but it's getting there it's nice and thick and I am going to put as much glitter as I want to on there now because I want to make sure that it is nicely thick and applied. So I'm just gonna sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle as much as I want. And whatever I don't use, I will put back. Can you see? Making sure. Put back into this bottle because I don't wanna waste. And with my plates here and let's see my plates here and my paper to protect the table I should be able to get all of the excess back into the bottle without a problem. I can finish the touch-ups later. I'll go ahead and pack this little piece in. It'll dry. I'm not going to paint the bottom of the bottle. Uh, maybe I will paint the bottom of the bottle at a later date and when I can actually like lay the bottle on its side and let it dry on its own. Um, that doesn't have to take place during this particular video, but you'll probably see it on the final 
video when I show, or the final picture when I show the product after it's completely done. But in the meantime, you know, it's looking pretty good. This brown bottle has turned completely snow white almost. And it'll be good for a prop. It could be used as a vase. It could be used as an accent on a table. It can be used as, you know, a pretend like, oh, look at me. I'm drinking something I'm not supposed to. Maybe, maybe not. I, I wouldn't do that to a young person. My business is Christian based, so. But even nuns drink beer. <laughs> But they don't drink beer out of bottles with sprinkles on the top. Now, do they? So, that's not what I'm trying to sell. I'm trying to sell cute pictures. In the meantime, we're going to take another break and let this dry. Okay, I believe it's time for another layer. I would like to adhere another layer of Mod Podge that has glitter already in side of it just to give it a nice thick coat and maybe even to toughen up some spots that look like they just need to be stiffened up a little bit or just a little thicker layer that might be the side with the label on it. And at this point, I can barely tell. Maybe this side. I do want to just make sure that it's on there real good. Real good. Make sure that the Mod Podge and the glitter is on there real good. Now, I used a little brush. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. And that's what I used to try and sweep off some of the excess glitter from the table. And it helped me. It helped me just um, dust up a little bit. Do some dusting. Get some extra glitter off the table. Put that my podge with glitter inside around this top area, just to thicken it up just a tad. Now, again, these bottles they don't have to be used for holiday uh, for photo shoot props. They can be used for holiday decor. This color that I'm working with right now looks really good. I mean, I, I looked at it from a distance and I said to myself, that's pretty nice looking for, you know, decor for a holiday for um, maybe like a snow scene or, you know, if you want to decorate it some other way, put a bow on it or I don't know, repurpose a, a wine bottle, an actual wine bottle that's filled with wine. Um, maybe that person give it as a gift to somebody who really, really likes uh, wine and they can have their particular flavor, their favorite flavor, all decorated, you know? And if you're a crafting type person, you know, you might, instead of just giving them a case of, <laughs> or a six pack of beer, you can give them this fancy decoupage of beer with a bow on it and say, I did this for you. It sounds special. It sounds like a good idea. They don't have to guess what kind of beer it is because they, they would know it's their favorite, but it's pretty to look at and it looks like a gift. So that's something to think about. 
make your person feel special. And, you know, they, they would appreciate it because of the extra effort. Because of the extra effort that you put in to make them, you know, feel special. Their favorite color or, you know, again, like I said, it could be like a winter wonderland color like this. So, I think that sounds fun. Fun and interesting. Fun for those people who just love you know their beer i know once i had asked uh, someone to um, do some work around my house and they said you could pay me in a six pack of beer and what if i had taken the time and decorated it that would have been fun and they would have said oh that's nice that's interesting they would have had their beer too <laughs> Okay, so I have all this extra glitter. I'm going to go over my bottle one more time with this glitter. Yeah. Oh, I know I just touched because I was doing this with my left hand. Doing it with my left hand. Let me make sure. Let me see if I left a hole. Actually, it probably doesn't matter. And since I'm right-handed, I'll do the glitter with my right hand trying to stay on the plate this time because any excess I want to be able to transfer right back over to the bottle from the other plate And it doesn't matter really because whatever is left over, I am still just going to sweep up pretty much and put back in my glitter container. Sorry if my hand is in the way. I'm trying my best to make sure that you're able to see on the screen. It's a decent attempt. Again, first attempt. Decent attempt. And my next bottle. And you see, all I had to do here is for an empty spot, just use my paint sponge and just tap on some of the Mod Podge with the glitter in it. Go ahead and get it on there. Set it down, let my finger release it. <laughs> and let it dry. I think this will be my final layer. Maybe I'm going to add just a little bit more. I see a spot that I'm concerned with. So I'm scooping off any excess. And I'm using what I have left in my cup. So I'm not wasting anything. One thing that I try not to do is waste anything. So any of my other projects, any leftovers, they're still in plastic cups and sealed in sandwich bags for future. I don't like to waste anything. I don't even like to waste food. So I'm going to eat my leftovers until they're gone. So if I feel like they've been around for a long time, I'm going to have a real big helping. I don't know why, but it's in my head not to waste anything. It's been there my entire life. I remember my mom saying there's starving people in Africa, so I have to finish my plate. My husband's like, why are you still eating that? I have to finish. I can't let it waste. Now, the one thing that we do waste in my family is milk. There is, <laughs> I hate to mention this, 
but there is a bottle of milk, a jug of milk, a, something bigger than a gallon. I don't know where this thing came from. It's a monstrosity in my refrigerator that if you touch that bottle of milk, jug, milk, giant gallon, two gallon monster thing, that thing is going to explode in your face. So I told my husband, I don't know why you buy milk. I don't know why you bring it home. But that particular jug monster, you get it out. It's been there since I don't know how long. And if you touch it, it is going to erupt like a white volcano. It is the most disgusting thing I could ever imagine. And I refuse. I refuse. I'm trying to take my hand off. I refuse to... even try to empty it in the in the sink because somebody was supposed to drink it. I haven't had a cup of milk since 1993 and I won't for the rest of my life. I don't care if you tell me it's the last thing on earth I'll ever be able to drink. If it's not flavored in orange soda, it's not going down my throat. So However, um, the milk is bad. The milk needs to go. I, we waste milk. That's probably the only thing that we waste in this house. It's not my fault. I didn't ask for the milk. I think my grown kids keep saying they like milk. And my husband keeps buying it like they're children. But they don't drink it. They need to buy their own milk. But... If you touch this milk, I'm, it's going to explode. I probably should video it because it might be interesting to see. That might actually take me over a million views. So one day I may get up um, when my husband rises at 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and watch him dispose of the milk and watch it explode all over my kitchen and all over my husband. That would be an interesting thing to see. As long as it doesn't happen to me. <laughs> all right. This bottle, it needs to dry. This will be the final coat. The last, the final coat of glitter. The last coat that you shall see should be Mod Podge. I promise this time. I think it's pretty well covered. I don't want to do too much more. Um, because at this point, I feel like I'm just wasting glitter. And glitter is, you know, it's expensive. So $7 for this. I do have quite a bit that I can put back in. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, I wish I had something that was more at an angle, like a, let's see, I have a couple of clumps of glitter with my pot do <laughs> in it. I, I wish that, um, I had realized that it was just regular Elmer's glue before I had spent the money. But if you can see, I'm just putting it back in the jar. So that should give my jar a nice, a nice little scoop of, or, or a dose of, of a fullness. A nice little bit of fullness. Can you see? Just putting it back. No waste. No waste here. Not trying to. Whatever waste, I'm going to scoop it up with this little brush. Or maybe even one of the um, the 
sponge paint brushes and put it back. But the less wasted, the more efficient I feel. Another reason why I figured that this was Elmer's glue of some sort is how it's peeling off my hands real good. Now, what's sticking to my hands mostly is the glitter. But if you get a nice peel, you'll realize that it's peeling off just like glue did when you were in the first grade. So, but the glitter is sticking to me. So with this glitter mixed with glue, I might not try and mix that back into my, my container of iridescent glue. I might not do that. But I think that I did pretty good. I only use this much glue, I mean this much glitter on the bottle. So, and it looks like that, that amount of glitter. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm pretty proud of that. So I'm going to let this dry. I won't be using this my Podge and brush with um, glitter on it because I want a nice smooth layer of my Podge on the dried bottle. So I'm going to let this dry. I probably with a nice grip. Let's see, probably with my left hand. Try right, to shake off. I don't know if you can see any extra. Not that much coming off. And I'll use a dry brush, a dry paint brush with only my Podge on it and seal it in pretty much and that should work. It's gonna have to be a nice good slathering of it to seal it in. So we'll see how that turns out. All right, see you on the next, after the next break. All right, thanks a lot.
Okay, so I am coming back to the project from last night. And <clears throat> I will say that I'm not exactly pleased with how the beer bottle turned out. The coating of the Mod Podge and the glitter has dried overnight. However, it did not completely fade out the brownness of the beer bottle. But while I was waiting for that to dry, I did take a wine bottle and I did a Mod Podge and purple glitter. And I'm very pleased with this one. It has dried overnight and then I've added another coat of glitter and Mod Podge to it. Um, and when I did that, I just let it sit, oh, I let this sit overnight in a plastic bag. I did not discard. Again, I don't believe in wasting anything. So I put this, the glitter and the Mod Podge and the actual painting sponge in a plastic Ziploc bag. And I just let that sit overnight because I didn't want to waste. So it was, it came in handy. It helped me do my touch-ups on any spot that was missing here on the wine bottle. And it looks good to me. It looks good. It looked really good when it was dry, but I just did a final coat and I'm going to let that dry and it should be nice. It should be sealed. Um, the glitter should not be difficult to touch. The Mod Podge will seal it all in and make it as smooth as possible. Now this one, I'm, I'm not, again, not very pleased with because I believe the some of the, the coating of the white is really thick and then the brown did leak through from the bottle. What I will do is from my leftover from last night, I have already added some glitter to it. There's a big clump of glitter right there. And then I'm going to add some water. And let me go ahead and move this purple bottle out of the way. Since it's on a paper plate, I can just slide it on out of the scene. And move my white bottle to the center of the screen. With my leftover my Podge and glitter that I just added, I'll go ahead and pour some water in. Not too much. I just want enough to mix. And I'll take my sponge, painting sponge, and stir it in just a little. And I may go ahead and add a little bit more my Podge because I do want it to be thicker on the bottle because I'm trying to cover up the brown. And if you notice, the um, wine bottle was fine, you know, but <clears throat> of course the glitter was darker and the wine bottle was um, a darker shade as well, but the glitter was darker. So it probably was okay for it to, you know, blend in, I imagine. So, I've had a couple of spills <laughs> overnight, but um, not overnight, but while I was painting before. But I was just trying to make sure that that purple did turn out well. Purple is a special color to me. It reminds me of my daughter who passed away. So, I, anything purple, I'm going to give it my best effort. But I tried to scoop up as much as I could so that I wouldn't waste, but... Unfortunately, there's purple glitter everywhere, but that's not a bad thing for me. I love purple now. Um, you know what I can do is I can mix another color in here. This iridescent is is not it's not taking on the form that I imagine. I think if I were to do iridescent again then I probably would do it on a clear bottle. So, but I can take this Mod Podge 
water and glitter solution. And I can probably add in another color. I think I might add in this. You know what? No, I'm going to add in this blue. Because if you notice, well, I notice that the sparkle or the glimmer that's coming off of the iridescent when it hits the light, it's a greenish bluish color. So I will add in some blue so that it can just bring that color out a little bit more. So I don't know if you noticed yesterday when I was trying to open this glitter, it's kind of difficult with the first seal. So you have to use a knife to get in there. Don't want to break everything. But I got to chop through in order to get, break that seal. Ah. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> Always good to have a, um, what do you call, a butter knife in tow. So, this has a sponge layer. So, I had to take that out. And now I can pour in my blue glitter. Let's see. Move the little tongue area out of the way. Pour in my blue glitter right into the mix. And it should just put a nice blue coat over the top. I probably don't have to do too much. But mixing it in, it should seal it with a nice blue shine. So let's see how that works. I may even may even sprinkle some blue glitter over the top. Whatever that I do, I am going to have to take some time to let it dry. But I think I will sprinkle some blue glitter. So, here we go. Oh, I don't mind that at all. I just want it to spread evenly. I don't mind this at all. This is cute. It's kind of a wintry blue, but a baby blue, a sky blue, all at the same time. The only thing about these little blue, a uh, little glitter containers, again, with half of the glitter missing out the bottom. <laughs> uh, the only thing about them is you know, that, that, that part right there with half of it missing. So I don't want to use too much. I think I might let it dry like this. I don't want to wipe any of it away. A nice smooth seal should not be a problem. I'm not, I don't think I'm taking too much off of the bottom. What I have been doing is scooping up as much as I can. Let me see. Yeah, scooping up as much as I can from the whatever drizzles off and just putting that right back on there. The water mixture of the glitter in my podge makes it smooth to apply to the bottle. And not too much is coming off as I work my way around the bottle. I think the blue might help me, you know, seal it in and 
make it all look one color. I appreciate that because I didn't want this particular, I didn't want, I don't want any of my creations or crafts to be a flop. I'm working on my cake decorating skills, <laughs> still working on it. I have a plan to learn how to do it. I did break down and went ahead and bought um, pastry bags so that when I try to put it um the rosettes on the cake that I'm I'm adding glitter to the Mod Podge cup. Not too much, I hope. Because I don't want to use it all up. But enough to seal in. I'm just stirring it up. Make a nice, healthy helping of blue my Podge and water. Now, if it's if the people say Mod Podge, <laughs> if that's the correct way of saying it, even though it's not spelled that way, more power to the struggle. Yeah, but I like to say, I, I like to use proper vernacular. Even when it's difficult to do, sometimes, you know, you are a product of your environment. So when you speak, you probably speak in the dialect that you hear most often. I have tried to be a person that speaks clearly but I know that I have a nasally sound and I get that from my mother. And I know that my children have a nasally sound as well. So they get it from me. And then from the part of the country that I'm from, we are from the Midwest, St. Louis to be exact. And if you're familiar with Nellie, they call his music country grammar. And they say, we say over here, over there. And I noticed that we do speak that way. <laughs> here, there, over there. So we don't complete our words. So I try to complete my words, but sometimes it's just not as easy. It's, it's my accent basically so country grammar <laughs> it's the way that I grew up hearing the words and the way that they come out of my mouth it's not something that I'm purposely doing but I will say that I, I do try to you know listen and learn and try to retrain myself so when you're a businesswoman such as myself or if you're in corporate America um, where I came from, um, you do have to speak clearly. You want people to understand you and you want people to come to your level, you know, um, and you want to be able to have conversations that are clear and understandable with my business a lot of my communication is written everything that is in my contract is on my website as well if i text you i will send you excerpts from my contract and from my website. Therefore, everything is the same everywhere you get it. You will not catch me slipping up and giving you something that's not on my contract unless it is agreed upon by both parties. So, and then we put that in writing on the contract. Kudos to 
the ruthless and infamous Judge Judy. Infamous Judge Judy. Because everything within the four walls of the contract is what I go by. Now, I'm going to let this bottle sit. And it's going to dry with the with the more of the bluer hue just as the purple one is doing so I think it's coming together I worked on the purple one again while the white one or the iridescent one was drying and um, I'm very very proud of the purple any light color that you see on the purple is a layer of Mod Podge water and glitter. So as you see the darker areas, that's where it's drying. So I think that it's coming together. These will be excellent props. I have other, col other colors to conquer for my three other wine bottles. Um, this wine bottle, this very elongated shape, I have two of those. One will be the silvery color. Silver is kind of dark and silver. Again, it's reminding me of Christmas or holiday, but it does have some purple and I think a couple of blue flecks in there. So I like it. And then I have the all gold color. So I'm very excited about that one. Now, I'm not taking the labels off of the bottles other than the price sticker because it's just going to be lab laborious, laborious for me to do so. So the price sticker will come off. Um... This bottle was from World Market. Again, when I did drink wine, it was good. This was about $12. This was a good bottle of wine. It was nice and sweet. That's the way I liked it back then. Um, Moscato Allegro. However, I'm going to leave the sticker on and I will Mod Podge over it. I did that with this purple bottle and you can barely tell it's there. So there are spots where I see, I think I see it coming through, but I can easily my podge and glitter over it and it'll be gone. Um, same thing with the beer. You can barely see it. The beer bottle, you can barely see it. But these will be great accents to the, the backdrop of, of a photo shoot. So thank you for watching. I am going to let these dry and I will have a picture of them, the final product at the end of the video. I would like for you to click the like button, subscribe and look for notifications from TS Ditto Photography Studio and Gallery. And you can take note on how I do my actual crafts and what to do and what not to do based on what I'm what I'm showing um, as I'm going through this is the actual process that I'm going through I'm not trying to make it look perfect I want you to see what I did wrong and see how I tried to correct it and you know this is real life and nothing fake about it learn from my mistakes just as I'm learning as I go. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Talk to you next time. Bye.